One ring to rule them all. One ring to find them, and in the darkness, bind them. My precious. That's right, Lord of the Rings turns 20 years old today. Well, at least Fellowship of the Ring. I remember it like yesterday. It felt like a long time ago, but it, Christmas break just started. I was in the fifth grade. And of course, I was aware of The Hobbit. I read that as a children's book, and The Lord of the Rings were a popular set of novels. You had Fellowship, you had The Two Towers, and Return of the King. And I remember seeing the trailer for it. It had clips of all three movies, and it was advertised as this modern epic, and you really didn't have a film like that before. For me, The Matrix is kind of like my Star Wars, but for people a little bit older and younger than me, Lord of the Rings trilogy was like our modern equivalent of the original Star Wars trilogy. And Peter Jackson basically broke through into Hollywood and was on the map. I was aware of his previous film, The Frighteners, an underrated film with Michael J. Fox. But there was a lot of passion into this. And even with the changes from the novel, this was a superb series. And I actually remember the Spider-Man 2002 trailer and Attack of the Clones trailer on this film. This film was very long and boring for me at the time. I appreciate it now more that I'm older, but it really didn't get going till Two Towers and Return of the King. And in many ways, this still kind of holds up. I think it might be a better film than Two Towers and Return of the King in many aspects. Even with um, the extended version, I love the scenes they add there, showing more of the Elvish community, showing more with the Nazgul and other things like that. And uh, it had so many iconic moments, you know, you shall not pass. Gandalf, uh, Ian McKellen, of course, is an X-Men. You had Viggo Mortensen as Aragorn. He wasn't the original Aragorn. It was actually Stuart Townsend, but after four days of filming, they thought he looked too young. So they switched to Viggo Mortensen, who gives a performance of a lifetime here. You have John Rhys Davies as Gimli, Orlando Bloom as Legolas, then you have Elijah Wood as Frodo and Sean Astin as Samwise Gamgee. The course, Lord of the Rings is a follow-up to The Hobbit. And while they do make embellishments, they stay pretty true to the essence of what J.R.R. Tolkien started with Lord of the Rings. I feel bad to admit this, but the only reason why I went to go see it a second time was just to see the Spider-Man and Attack of the Clones trailers again, and I immediately regretted it after that. But overall, this is the hero's journey. You know, Frodo is sent on this journey. And Bilbo has been consumed with this one ring. You get that awesome fight scene. So many films have imitated the fighting in this film. What you would call epic, you know, 300. Recently, Zack Snyder's Justice League, you know, was made in 2016, but that history lesson fight totally felt like Lord of the Rings opening here. You also have Hugo Weaving and Liv Tyler in this. And we get to be introduced to Frodo Baggins, a new character who's related to Bilbo. Gandalf returns, and there is an evil brewing. You know, this is a start of Middle-earth being consumed by this darkness. And we go from the peaceful community of the Shire onto this hero's journey, onto this fellowship so far in this film of trying to get the ring to Mount Doom. And it is such an amazing tale. So many twists and turns. The action is there after a while. It has its moments to rest, moments to just kind of go out and be an epic, epic film. And what helps this is that they filmed it in New Zealand, and it's just, you know, especially compared to the Hobbit trilogy, this isn't as computerized as people think. There are still models used. Weta, Weta's workshop is just movie magic at its finest. And I love this story. I love seeing Sean Bean die yet again <laughs> as Boromir, you know. You get to see how men and other people could become corrupted by this ring, and then there's this pure person, Frodo, who has to destroy it. And even that takes a toll on him, not only through this film, but through the second and third film. And it's quite something, because it leaves you wondering, I'm like, is the ring that evil that it corrupts people, or does it just bring out the corruptness that's already within people's souls, you know? But J.R.R. Tolkien made Lord of the Rings based off his experience fighting war. You could definitely see that not only in the novels, but in this. Christopher Lee is awesome as Saruman. So when does Saruman the Wise leave reason for madness? I love that fight him and Gandalf have. The music that dun 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 dun. Everything about this film 
still holds up and I would say that it's actually aged like a fine wine. This is a superb epic. And you know, Lord of the Rings is really one giant film split in three parts, but kind of like the original Star Wars trilogy, each individual part feels like its own isolated film. It's not like the stuff we have with the MCU and stuff being like never ending. Like no, it continues, but there is definitely a beginning, middle, and an end for this chapter. And Lord of the Rings as a whole with Fellowship, Two Towers, and Return of the King are the beginning, middle, and an end in a grander story. So it's quite something. And, you know, without this film, I don't think you would have had franchising. You know, Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings came out the same year. And it kind of was the birth of the franchises. You know, you had Pirates of the Caribbean, you had Spider-Man, you had Christopher Nolan's Batman. The X-Men's kind of had a resurgence in that. You have the MCU, you have the DCEU. You have like the Hunger Games, Twilight, Maze, where anything that's based on a book or young adult novel is like a franchise now. Everybody in Hollywood started eyeing franchises, you know? And it's all because of this film. And for a while, you did have other war epics like Troy and Alexander and stuff, but I really wish we got more of like the war epic uh, films we had in like the late 60s, early 70s and stuff, and even in old Hollywood in the Golden Age. We didn't quite get there, but overall, you could definitely tell the influence this film has had. And it's one of those influential films and trilogies that just shaped the future of cinema ever since its release. Peter Jackson went on to go do King Kong, an amazing underrated remake in 2005, as well as The Lovely Bones, and then revisited The Hobbit, but I didn't like The Hobbit as much. The Hobbit's good, but they stretched out a small children's book into three movies, and to me, it feels like the Star Wars prequels to the originals. It missed what Lord of the Rings had. And despite the changes from the novel, you could definitely tell they try to remain faithful to Tolkien's world. And... What can I say? I'm at a loss for words. It turns 20, and I still love this movie. 5 out of 5 A+, one of the best films ever made. Let me know down in the comments below. What was the first time you heard of Lord of the Rings? When was the first time you saw it? I saw it on opening weekend with my father and brother, and then it was just my brother and I, as I said earlier. And then I ended up reading the books. I had no idea it was a sequel to The Hobbit. I read The Hobbit when I was much younger. And then I read Lord of the Rings, fell in love with those novels and the world of Middle Earth. It's going to be interesting to see what Amazon does with the money being put in, but I don't know if it's going to be as good or taken as seriously as these films. This is a once in a lifetime type of movie, type of trilogy really, that comes once in every person's lifetime, once in a generation. And it's quite something special, even 20 years later. Anyway, that's my quick retrospective of Lord of the Rings. Feel free to let me know down in the comments below, when was the first time you saw Lord of the Rings? And subscribe for more videos and check out these other videos for more content. May you all stay safe and healthy. May you have a Merry Christmas, my precious.